will say that uh, just, just before the holiday break, here at the end of the, the month, we will distribute that electronic card to our school community. So again, congratulations, all of you did an outstanding job. We're very proud of you. to some of our older students here in the district. So we're excited first to recognize our boys varsity soccer team. So we're going to ask Chris Campbell to come on up, along with coaches, coaches, coaches. They're coming. Boys varsity soccer team won Section 3 class, Triple A championship, the first class Triple A championship in New York State. And they also um, moved on to win the regional championship game and beat the state championship. Uh, unfortunately, uh, fell just a little short, I will say. I know a couple board members uh, attended both the regional game and the final state uh, with Ian, and uh, certainly it was an exciting game. It was certainly a very proud of all the work and effort over the course of the season. Um, from the and the saves, uh, we were down to get the original game at the Thanks to uh, this is a over there. The <laughs> awesome saves, the rest of the team going forward and coming forward, uh, pulling through with outstanding uh, goals, and, and it was just an exciting uh, run. So we can't thank you enough for the just excitement that you created here in this chapter. Uh, so, uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chris Campbell, and he's going to read through uh, the names of all of the Boys soccer players, players, and we will introduce you to Will the following players please come up? Tamara Abraham, Joshua Armbrister, Aiden Baker, Sawyer Barr, Ryan Morris, Owen Burke, Thomas Campbell, Lucas Corbett, Owen Daly, Enzo Also, Nathan uh, Georger, Ethan Harr, Jack Hickman, Nicholas Halstead, Andrew Jong, Hugh Lukasek Bohan, Joe McMullen, Ian Price, Declan Lindrymore, Gregory Raymond, Michael Sacco, Nicholas Sacco, Aiden Savage, Alex Smith, Patrick Smith, William Stevens. Marcelo Bona and Tyler Williams.
Ciao voi. We're going to recognize members of our girls' varsity tennis team, so Coach Mason, if you could find up here, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're excited first to recognize girls' varsity tennis players, Sonia Asman and Lainey Nesbitt, who won the Section 3 championship for doubles, competed in the New York State Girls Tennis Championship. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Ava Smith, Smith won, won the Section 3 championship in the 100-yard backstroke in the 50-yard freestyle. Uh, Ava also placed first in the state qualifier in both of these events. She competed in the New York State Girls Swimming Championship. We also want to recognize Olivia Bananas, who won the Section Championship in the 100-yard butterfly. The coaches, Chris Lennon and Noel Astasso, you can come on up.
Mark was uh, recognized last month as being a participant in that program. And the New York City Master Teachers Program is a professional network of more than 1,700 public school teachers with a passion for inspiring the next generation of educational leaders in the year of uh, math, science, technology, et cetera. Uh, we've had to work here in the district since 2018. Congratulations. Again, congratulations to the athletes. We are very proud of you. And to the parents, thank you for your support. And the coaches, wonderful job. Continue to help these kids. And to our staff, we are very proud of you. So thank you for coming. We are so proud to have you a part of the Eville community. And I hate to tell you that the business section is next, so you can go ahead and go home now if you would. It's not nearly as exciting as what we just had. But thank you so much. as a Baldwinsville Central School District Board member, effective after the conclusion of tonight's board meeting on December 4th, 2023, to devote more time to my family and pursue my doctorate. Serving on the board has been a rewarding experience, and I am grateful for the opportunity to contribute to the school's mission. Thank you to my family, mentors, thought partners, community and district for their unwavering support and encouragement. I celebrate the amazing leaders, educators, and support staff who serve our most precious resource, our student capital. Thank you to the exceptional Beville community of students, including my beloved daughter, who continues to widen my lens as a parent and as a human being. I celebrate you all, and I am so very proud of all you do to reach your fullest potential. Thank you. I uh, 
know I speak for everybody when I say we appreciate your sacrifice. I know you have an extremely busy schedule, so thank you for your service. Thank you for your time and your insights. Thank you. If I could say a few comments as well. Uh, for those of you that were not aware, Tanya was appointed to the board in uh, December of 21st of 2020, and she served until uh, June 30th of uh, 2021. She was then elected in May of 2022 and has served since July 1st of 2022 until the present time. Uh, and certainly on behalf of the leadership team, the, the Board of Education, uh, we certainly extend appreciation to you as an outgoing Board of Education member. Uh, your dedication and service to our board, our students, our staff, administrators is, is greatly appreciated. Uh, many of you may know that Tanya is an advocate for all students. Uh, her support of our district's team, our teachers, administrators, support staff members have helped us shape our, our current district's strategic plan and uh, certainly her contributions to that are, are um, immense. Uh, Tanya spent many evenings away from her husband and her daughter, as she's mentioned, and certainly based on her work moving forward, uh, getting a doctor is, is, is a task in itself and certainly wish you well in, in that endeavor. And, uh, We'll be probably there when you're defending, so please let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Board, um, to speak. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I too um, would like to read my resignation uh, for my position on the board. to policy 1240 of the Baltimore Central School District Board of Education. Please accept this as my resignation as a member of the Board of Education at the close of the regular board meeting this evening. The two and a half years in which I have proudly served as a Board of Education member have been rewarding yet challenging. I'm grateful for those in this community and district who have supported and encouraged me in this role. This statement is a reflection of my personal experiences and opinions during my time served on this board. In May of 21, I campaigned to provide a greater level of transparency, ask critical questions, and ensure a high level of accountability. I have upheld all of these to the best of my ability while working, with a role, working within my role and responsibility, responsibility of a Board of Education member. I have learned a great deal about our district, the field of education, and the role of a board member. I am saddened that I will no longer be able to serve this community and district in this role. My integrity has been questioned by being a part of this board. The board's values no longer align with my ethical and core values. I have been scrutinized, dismissed, and silenced for asking questions that fall within the scope of my board responsibilities. I am hopeful within time I will be able to give back to the community and district in other meaningful ways. I strongly encourage this board, future boards, and our community to listen for understanding, ask the difficult questions, and most importantly, trust but verify. This is the most time-consuming and difficult part of this position, and this is where the real work comes in. I have, in my time as a volunteer <coughs> on this board, endured isolating tactics in which I have been rebuked, dismissed, and disrespected with a level of contempt to discredit my service to the board. My thoughts and concerns have been suppressed and I am no longer able to fulfill my fiduciary responsibilities as a democratically voted member of this board. It has been implied that I am a liar. I have been chastised, publicly being called ridiculous and taking up the board's valuable time. My contributions to the board have been disregarded and statements have been made by board members but the questions I pose are gotcha questions. <coughs> the intent of my questions are for clarification and understanding to continue to move our district forward academically for all students. I believe strongly and have advocated vocally that procedures and policies must exist and many matters must be discussed, questioned, understood, and investigated when necessary. These beliefs and practices have not and do not resonate with most previous and most current board members. Mutual respect and understanding toward one another is something that our teachers and staff instill in our students on a daily basis as they align with the district's mission and vision. 
They work diligently to foster a positive and inclusive environment for the students in which bullying is not to be tolerated and encourage others not to be bystanders. As board members, we too are role models for our students and should demonstrate the same. The phrase practice what you preach is powerful and as board members, we should always practice what we preach. I would strongly encourage this board to do just that. Um, I thank my family, my thought partners, um, everyone in the district who has been um, willing to provide support and assistance and learning. Um, and I thank you for this time for allowing me to do this. Um, and can I provide you a little copy of my student? Thank you. Shelly, I just wanted to say certainly appreciate I know you started off as a district uh, PTA member and, and worked your way onto the board and were elected in uh, May of 2021 and served from May of, or excuse me, June, July of 2021 to the president. Uh, similar to the statements uh, that I made with, with Tanya, we can't thank you enough for your service and I know you'll certainly enjoy spending a little bit more time uh, away from all of this with your, your husband and your, your two children. So. On behalf of the district, we thank you for everything uh, and your contributions. Thank you, Dr. Farber. Well, I guess there, are there any other, uh, that was a lot of activities there, those two, but uh, anything else to report on the board activities or we're we ready to move on to our new board report? I think mine, you have the floor. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I just look yes. Um, recently, um, two of your students presented in front of the Osceola's Board of Education on behalf of the Puerto Rican Hispanic Youth Leadership Institute, um, so by Sophia Beck, and right now because I'm really nervous, um, hold on Sophia Beck, I got it, give me a board, and it's Sydney, I'm sorry? Caniado. No. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for this. this <coughs> I'm just going to say this much. It was in the weekly letter. I just wanted to say um, the two students who presented, and forgive me, and I'm seeing you Friday, forgive me, um, Sophie, Sophia and Sydney. Um, they presented um, their own personal accounts from their actual um, essays for college. They actually extracted some of their college essay and talked about the impact of the Puerto Rican Hispanic Youth Leadership Institute. We were so, so pleased, and the board leadership was so pleased and so moved by the words of these exceptional students. So I just want to celebrate them. We have 58 candidates, delegates, um, being trained from 10 different districts across the region, and it's great to see representation um, from Baltonsville. So I just want to celebrate that. And we will be recommending those four students uh, at a future uh, board meeting, similar to last year. So we'll, we'll certainly give them credit where credit is due. I actually, I have focused on the four students. Wait, well, the four students, yes, and there was the two that presented to the board. No, but she, yes, please, please. Yeah. Is that your report? I go to the Oh, okay, I'm so sorry. No, no, it's okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, Maya, go for it. All right. The semi formal happened on Saturday. It was lots of fun. Many wore pajamas for Pages Pajamarama. The total raised was $7,194.30 from all eight buildings. The funds represented at Liverpool High School, Pages work by Ryan Incorporated, student representatives Ryan Lewis and McKenna Brennan had presented them. It was attended by Dr. DeBarbery, Mr. Denton, and Mr. Ewing. It seems like students have more of a rhythm with the metal detectors. It's become a part of our schedule. And it was, I think it was, it was rough at first, but it, it was just a matter of getting into the schedule and incorporating it to our minds. The winter sports are starting. I will keep the board posted for those as the seasons go on. I'm going to try and check in with the athletic department to keep those updates regular. The rehearsal for the Matilda play has also started at Baker High School. The 2024 Angelo, I'm so sorry if I butchered this, Angelo Toro, Puerto Rican. Hispanic Youth Leadership Institute students were chosen. Kira and Remington, Sophia Beck, I'm so sorry, I'm Kiari, 
from Rodriguez and Isabella Clark. A post was made about Avon's website from what I hear it's an amazing program to be a part of. And for another thing to think here is we're going to set up a small box kind of as a trial. Um, a common box for me at Baker, we may do an online version as well to allow more voices across Baker to be heard. Um, it's just something small as long along with the students being chosen district-wide to also from all the grades and all the schools to help me get more reports from other schools as well so I can better inform the board on what is happening district-wide rather than what I hear, what I see on the Bob's website or just what's happening on the And that was all. Can I just to correct myself? So thank you, Sophia and Isabella. I owe you one. My apologies. They presented in front of the board. So thank you for correcting me. All right, thank you. So the next uh, agenda item is the public uh, participation. And we certainly are happy to have public comments. I think we have several speakers, so we ask in the interest of time, please limit comments to three minutes, and <coughs> we should not include specific individuals or positions, but we will respond in a letter, and board members are, won't engage. This is not a conversation. It's your right to, to express an opinion. Uh, if they're, uh, we are all here for students, and it's uh, expected that everyone speaking tonight will follow the rules and present them and model behaviors that we expect from our students. So with that, uh, Kim, we have some requests, I think. Correct. Uh, we actually have eight speakers this evening. James Berenger in regards to board procedures. So may I just interject for just a minute? James Berenger and Tanaji Turner will not be speaking. They came here to support, um, so you can remove them from the list. They were just members of my family here to support them. Tanaji Turner. Did you get a yellow line? No, I still have it, sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know. Thank you, my sister. My apologies. <laughs> that's, that's okay. That's why I asked for clarification. So thank you. Yeah, thank uh, you. So we'll Thank you. We'll move on to Josie Butler. And she's speaking in regards to VTAP for the student perspective. for four years, and this year was a student producer providing Mo Jr. I am also an upcoming production of Matilda. I enjoyed being involved in VTAP because it's a really good community, and I love being, I love the journey of bringing the show to life. We have a, such a great program. The directors, producers, and stage managers are helpful, supportive, and I've learned so much through my experience with them. I look forward to the upcoming shows in my future years with VTAP. I'm here today to give my perspective about the recent changes to our finances. As you know, in the past, we have been a self-funded program. We previously charged admission for our shows, and that money was used to put into our account to help fund future shows. Some of the costs include costumes, set designs, etc. In the past, the students have, have had to help make the plans and budget our shows. Students have learned important skills through this opportunity. However, now that our budget is part of the school district budget, this has changed. Other ways this has impacted our program includes the efficiency and flexibility of purchasing items for the show. Now there are extra steps, steps that need to be taken. For example, in previous years, if someone was painted from wall and ran out of paint, they could just use the ECA credit card and make the purchase right away to get the work done. Now, if someone needs to make a paint purchase, they need to go through many time-consuming steps. Also, in regards to purchasing items for the show, the set designers used to, used to be able to help buy, used to be able to buy things from antique shops, Facebook Marketplace, and other similar cheaper options. Now, with the changes, there are restrictions on where the items can be purchased, which will impact the cost. Another concern is that people will reserve, reserve tickets without fully committing to, be, to attending since the tickets are free. My family saw this at the recent emo show, where there were open seats around them, yet the shows were sold out. I know people that wanted to get tickets, but couldn't because it was sold out. Also, the arts are not free anywhere else. If you wanted to go see any performance, you would just have to pay for a ticket. If you wanted to see Aladdin at the Landmark or Christmas Carol at Syracuse Stage, you would have to pay for a ticket to see these high quality productions. 
We also put on high quality productions here at VTEP, but now people can just go see them for free. Having these free tickets could cause someone to believe that the arts are free other places. If someone were to go to college and want to see a concert, they would have to pay for a ticket. Some students are pursuing theater education post high school and taking away the opportunity to work on budgeting impacts their ability to learn some of these important skills with high school productions. One idea to make things more equitable is to offer a pay what you will show prior to the opening night, which is something I've been a part of with the Bondsville Theater Guild, and which would allow our members of our community to attend for free or at a low cost. I think the district's heart is in the right place to make seeing these great shows affordable and available to everyone. However, I believe the ticket prices were affordable already, and the old system allowed us to have the independence and flexibility that comes with being self-funded, which created the best experience for everyone involved with these productions. Thank you. of tickets that are sold for a BTAP show are used. I would like to update you regarding the results of making tickets free. About 80% of the free tickets were used. They went from about 5% of tickets sold going unused to 20%. This means that one out of every five tickets reserved for free went unused. Any organization that made a significant operational change and subsequently experienced that drastic of a loss would be negligent if they did not take immediate steps to reverse that change. Tickets sold to patrons that go unused still generate revenue for the organization. Free tickets that go unused do not generate revenue and rob our student artists of the opportunity to perform before a full house. It is still my understanding that this decision to make extracurricular activities free comes from an attempt to meet the district's commitment to equity. More than a week before the show Nemo was sold out, all available tickets had been reserved. Those who were not quick enough in reserving their tickets were out of luck. For whom is that equitable? The mission of the school district is to foster an environment to educate and empower all students today to become global citizens of tomorrow. That mission should not include teaching students and the community that their work should be free. We live in a capitalist country embedded in a worldwide economy. We do our children and our community a great disservice to shield them from the reality that goods and services are produced and exchanged at a cost. The district has a special interest in financially supporting an opportunity for students to experience a live theater production as audience, cast, and crew members. When that support means no one pays for a ticket, you have robbed the students of another very important lesson in economics. People pay for what they value. When our community members buy a ticket to see a school production, they are taking part in acknowledging the value of that production. It is a denigration of the student's efforts when their sponsor gives it away for free. I believe that our district should avoid the adoption of hollow gestures, like making everything free, and instead encourage real, substantive efforts to educate and empower our students with real-world opportunities. This is an issue not just for our theater arts program, but for all of the programs, musical, artistic, and athletic, which have been impacted, please consider an immediate change to rectify the situation. Thank you. Our next speaker is Vincent Kearney in regards to tax exemption.
foremost, thank you for allowing me to talk to the board. Uh, my name is Vincent Kearney. I'm uh, current vice chair of the Lysander Public Safety or Codes uh, Committee. Uh, I just want to read a statement um, from the state. It says, new statewide exemption for volunteer firefighters and ambulance workers. Generally speaking, the new law gives municipalities, school districts, fire districts throughout the state the option to provide a property tax exemption of up to 10% to volunteer firefighters and ambulance workers. Any such exemption would be valid only on property used exclusively for residential purposes. If a portion of a volunteer's property is used for other purposes, the exemption would be prorated accordingly. So then in the crux of my conversation, um, what we're looking to do is have the Paltonsville School District consider the 10% tax exemption for volunteer firefighters and ambulance workers. Have you guys been broached on this or approached on this in the past or by anybody? Any other conversations here? Uh, this is the first. So we struggle as um, there's there's literally a number of volunteer firefighters per the NFPA dated uh, a blog dated um, November 10th, 2022. Regarding a report from 2020, there were 676,000 volunteer firefighters, a decrease of 6% from the previous year, and the lowest number of volunteer firefighters reported over the years. There's a number of training requirements. There are unscheduled hours, obviously, the pagers go off all night. Um, demands from the public, dial 911, they expect people to, to show up. Um, many, many family sacrifices for us volunteers. Fire service has changed over the years. Many, many more alarms. Um, and as 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 I've been a, a member of uh, Belgian Cold Springs Fire Department for over 30 years, we're we're getting older. So, what I'm looking for is the board to consider the 10% exemption, so it may entice folks to volunteer. You know, and use it as a recruitment tool uh, or a retention tool. Any questions for me? This is not a, a discussion, so thank you for okay. your comment. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker this evening is Steve Young in regards to State of the Arts. Good evening. That wasn't going to speak tonight, um, but unfortunately a couple of the others weren't able to make it, um, so I don't have anything prepared like last time. However, uh, since I don't have that much to say, um, just a few things. I'd like to first thank, um, I can't use names, but I'd like to thank a board member that spoke to me about uh, possibly upgrading the marching band facility. That person knows who they are. I appreciate that. Um, marching band uh, does a lot with a little, a very lot with a very little. Um, that being said, um, back to BTAP. So we got the numbers in. And as you just heard, uh, prior shows were around the 95% mark for attendance. Now we're down at the uh, you know 80 to 75% mark. Um, I, I have the numbers, I'm not gonna read them all boring. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that in the previous shows, there were uh, tickets that were handed out for free. They were uh, comp tickets. Uh, the percentages of those shows were attended were at the 95% mark, but in those same years, the comp tickets had anywhere from a 40% participation up to as much as only as high as a 75% participation. Uh, so those numbers of the comp tickets, the tickets that were handed out for free because there's no uh, accountability or there's no ownership of those tickets, uh, those drag the numbers down uh, for the overall participation of the show. So you can see as a trend over the years that when you hand things out for free, People don't always treat them like they would have if they had ownership of them. And uh, as you've heard, uh, you know, these students, they produce uh, an outstanding product. Any of you that were there to see Finding Nemo, you saw uh, examples of that. Um, and, and I hope I encourage you all to come see Matilda because, uh, you know, the high school show is, well, they're high schoolers, right? And uh, they do an amazing job. Um, so reflecting on those numbers, um, what I would say about that is we as, as humans have the power of reflection, right? And since we have made it worse, and for me personally in the uh, building department, right, it is absolutely miserable. This process was miserable to try to get through this. 
absolutely miserable. And with Matilda, uh, there's a lot of things that we need to get, like uh, Trunspole's desk, chairs, uh, the Wormwood's house, things of that nature. In the past, we would have just gone to Facebook Marketplace and for 20 bucks picked up a chair, 50 bucks picked up a desk. I gotta build that. I have to build a desk, right? Which I can do, I don't have a problem with that, but you're gonna take a number of hours, and if any of you have seen a Matilda play, I'm going to be living there now because of this, right? And to build that desk that we could have got for 50 bucks, um, it's gonna cost me probably 150 to 200 dollars for materials to build that same desk and all my time, which is a lot of time that I spend away from my wife and kids, uh, you know, at nights. Um, so all that being said, uh, I, I would just like to say that uh, based on the numbers, we knew this was a bad decision going in. Uh, now we've seen the numbers, now we know it was a really bad decision. So, uh, you know, reflecting upon it, I would like to see that effective uh, tomorrow morning, we make the announcement that the uh, high school ticket sales are back on and that uh, BTAP becomes self-funded again. And we put the power back in the students' hands with the guidance of the directors running the show, the professionals that run that show. And let's get it back to being what it was. All right, thank you. everybody. My name is Luke Eckel. I'm Shelly's wife and uh, I was brought up here for support as well. Um, I actually have a resignation letter here and I was going to read it and one of the things that I looked at and was taken aback is her paragraph, in May of 21 I campaigned to provide a greater level of transparency, ask critical questions, and ensure a high level of accountability. I was asked to be here to read her letter in case you wouldn't let her read in public, the members of the board. I believe that you have, all of you have conspired to decrease the level of transparency. Do not allow critical questions and you don't want any accountability whatsoever. And I'm not going to name names because I don't know them. I only hear her frustrated, her tears, and the time that she puts in. And I think you should all be ashamed of yourself because you do not act like adults. You do not want to make this district better because if you did, you would actually have debates. You wouldn't shut people out and not let them do their job because just as much as you think you're right, they're right as well. So you might want to think about meeting in the middle and stop playing childish games because we could elect some teenage boys and girls to do the darn same thing that you folks are doing. Then I'd actually like to address something that I just found out today. I just realized why my football game is free. For DEI, if you people think that a $2 football ticket is going to be DEI or whatever a ticket to a show is, Five bucks, 10 bucks is going to include people? Wow, you guys are so far off base, it's unbelievable. And I'm not going to take any more because that was all from the heart. And I also want to thank my wife for doing what she's done. She has been through hell. And I'm glad it's finally over for her. Thank you very much. and my daughter participated in the Finding Nemo Junior Show. I also have a son who participates in athletics. Um, I wasn't planning on speaking tonight, so I apologize if I'm not up to my normal level of speaking, but uh, I do pay for my son to participate in athletics for Baldwinsville. I fully expected to pay for my daughter's theater tickets as I have never attended any of her shows without paying for a fee. So as I showed up to the parent meeting, I was shocked to find out that this year a change was made to not allow tickets to be sold for any fee, especially since this funds the program. 
the theater director makes multiple offers to allow students to have every option available to them to fund if they need a show t-shirt, if they need a ticket for the after party, or tickets to the show. There is no reason for finances to be a prohibiting factor for participating in a theatrical show here at Beville. These students work very hard, and they deserve a full audience. I understand there's always no shows, but entire rows were empty. I took pictures before each show and have photographic evidence of what happened one minute prior to the showtime of each show. The matinee in particular had lower level rows completely empty. The student performers noticed. This is a disservice to these students. Multiple people wanted tickets but were unavailable to get tickets for a sold out show, which as we've learned here tonight, had 20% of people not show up. This includes a teacher at Derby who was looking for tickets as well. And some parents who of kids in the show. <coughs> Finally, I'm not just a parent of a person in the show, I'm a taxpayer. And I cannot understand why we would take away a fully self-funded program and make it a line item in an already stretched budget. As my daughter said in the show, I hope we just keep swimming to find a better solution to this problem. Thank you. allowing me to speak tonight. Uh, before I go uh, into uh, uh, my, my speech here, basically I want to congratulate all the student athletes that uh, excelled uh, this fall. It was exciting to see that. And also congratulations to the faculty and their accolades. Um, and my name is Joe Saracini. I'm a lifelong resident of Baldwinsville. Uh, I was a 90 graduate. It seems like yesterday, whipping by. Um, I'm actually here on behalf of my brother, Anthony Saracini, who spoke passionately about this, this topic. Um, we're both active in the community, um, um, Baldwin Kiwanis, and um, I've, I've served publicly as well. So uh, I, I want to thank you all for, for your service. Um, the purpose for me being here today is to thank you on behalf of the Baldwin community for listening and taking the necessary steps and changing an existing naming policy to allow for future administration and staff to be honored and remembered for going above and beyond. They'd be joining the ranks of Charles W. Baker, Pearl Palmer, Harry Eldon, Catherine McNamara, Donald S. Ray, May Reynolds, John Nostrand, who happened to be my grandfather's, there's a wing named after him in Dirty, um, James Pelcher, John R. Carroll and others. <clears throat> this change in policy will support a strong initiative with um, significant support throughout the community in naming the new athletic facility at C.W. Baker in honor of Leo Johnson. Folks such as Leo and others mentioned earlier went above and beyond, leaving a legacy in their wake. These, in, these individuals have laid the foundation for the Baldwin School District to become what it is today. Leo Johnson was a huge influence as a coach, um, but it also extended far beyond the wrestling match. Uh, he, his unwavering commitment to excellent, excellence inspired generations of athletes to push the limits and strive for greatness, both on and off the field. Under his guidance, numerous athletes won state championships, earning recognition not only for themselves, but also for our beloved school district in town. As an athletic director, Leo played an instrumental role in fostering a culture of sponsor, uh, sportsmanship and teamwork within our community. He tirelessly worked towards providing opportunities for young athletes to develop their skills while instilling values such as discipline, dedication, and respect. Through his leadership, he, was, he helped shape well-rounded individuals who excelled, who excelled not just athletically, but also academically. I personally witnessed how Leo's coaching had transformed the lives of athletes in our community. His dedication, passion, unwavering support uh, made a lasting impact on many lives um, and athletic careers, personal growth. 
and it's time for us to come together as a community to show the gratitude by naming the new athletic center after his exceptional after after this exceptional administrator coach and basically he's a legend you mentioned leo johnson me and i hunt up in edwards new york he, big wrestling community up there you mentioned leo johnson i mean anybody in the wrestling world knows him he's a, he was a great guy um, as a side note to this, um, we have significant financial support um, that's been pledged to take care of any expenses associated with um, the naming of the new facility. So, so thank you, uh, appreciate it. And uh, that is the, the change, changing the policies on the agenda tonight. Okay. Uh, Kim, do we have any other speakers? No, we do not. Okay. So I appreciate the, the comments and also uh, we are discussing the uh, BTAP program under roundtable later tonight also because we want to get it right but uh, it does take some, some discussion and we have some additional financial facts that uh, the Joe and the administrator gathered for us. So, all right. So thank you. And thank you again for your service. consent agenda pursuant to the attached. So moved. Don? No, no worries. Second. Pardon, and moved. Thank you. Uh, any questions or discussions on the consent agenda? I, I just had a quick question. I just wanted to make sure I was um, reading the uh, special education report correctly. Um, so there's, uh, on the, the cover of the, the um, special education report, there uh, are 11 initial eligibility meetings and then eight ineligible. Am I reading this correctly that out of the 11, eight were determined to be ineligible or is that another denominator? No, that's correct. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. All right, and then five declassified, that's just from before, that's not part of the 11. That's that would that's be separate. Okay, that's separate. Okay, thank you so much. Any other questions? I think we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the consent agenda? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, motion carries. And uh, 8A, we have the uh, the policies of first reading of the 600 series. So those are on for first reading tonight, meaning they will be uh, up for a vote at the next meeting. Any comments there? Just uh, one real quick uh, comment. So this is, this was approved earlier in the evening, uh, recommended by the policy committee. Uh, it is based on the Workplace Violence Prevention Act that has been in place for quite some time for most employers in New York State. Schools were exempt uh, because of Project SAVE. Uh, there was a change recently in legislation and the governor's action that puts this uh, in place for schools effective January 4th. So we have it on for a first reading this evening. And um, our next meeting is on January 8th for final approval. Uh, for this policy. Uh, there is a 30-day window. Once this goes into effect on uh, January 4th, there's 30 days that schools have to be in compliance. I believe we are ahead of the game compared to other districts from where uh, you know, information we've received from, from legal. Uh, so certainly this is important. If the, there's no objections, uh, we would move this forward on uh, January 4th. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a notation. There's um, actually a misspelling in the second paragraph. Second. We, we got those uh, oh. at the policy committee meeting today. Oh, we I'm did, sorry. I just we, still feel like no, no, no. Okay. Thank you. We yep. did make the change. There were two when it transferred over because this is the policy that was uh, recommended from the state. Transferred from PDF to Word. There okay. was a few. Okay. But we got it. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So we're. Okay, with that, then we are ready to move on to uh, item C, 
and that is resolved the Board of Education approve the Baltimore Central School District Policy Series 2000, Policy ser policy, series policy 2360, updated, updated pursuant to the attached. Luke, I'll move. Thank you. Second. Don, okay, any discussion? This is the policy that will allow, uh, the change will allow naming of buildings or parts of buildings at this point. I think we need to go back and do the state Oh, I apologize. Okay. Let's do let's do since since the motion is on the table, we'll do we'll do C and then we'll go back to B. So uh, and if there's questions on C or discussion. Okay, so that motion's on the table. Uh, all in those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. That motion's carried, and my apologies. Uh, yes, the uh, resolve, so the 8B, resolve that the Board of Education approve the Baldwin Central School District District Policy Series 6000, review, retire, update, pursuant to the attached. So moved. Andrew? Second. Wayne? Okay, any discussion there that was obviously been discussed before, but any questions? Okay, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Okay, looks like motion carried. Thank you for that, guys. And now we're down to D, which is a donation to, to Palmer. Um, we'll get the motion on the table, and then I'm sure Joe has something to say. Resolve the Board of Education accept the donation of Palmer Elementary School from Tom and Maureen Mantle. Jennifer Bacon and Mary Ann Falkenberg in the amount of $7,840.50 in memory of their daughters and nieces, Mary Ella and Elizabeth, to be used for library furniture. Oh. Shelly, Sam. Okay, motion's on the table. Joe? So I just I just wanted to thank Tom and I see Tom's here. I don't see Marie. Um, and the rest of the family on behalf of the district. We can't thank you enough for uh, this donation. I know there are a lot of students at Palmer Elementary School who are going to enjoy uh, util utilizing the, the furniture that you're providing uh, the district and certainly know that moving forward uh, this will continue to keep uh, uh, Mary Ella and Elizabeth's memory alive uh, for, for years to come. So on behalf of the district, we can't thank you enough and once they officially approve this donation, I'm going to ask you to come forward with um, Mr. Ewing, the principal, and the rest of the board for that matter, and we'd like to have a photograph for uh, your generous contribution. Thank you. Okay, motion on the table. Uh, questions? Okay, let's proceed to vote. Those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. example so thank you uh, moving to E resolve for education accept the donation of four Nassau schools 
shuttle heat shield tiles, about 4,000 for Baker High School, pursuant to the attached. Sam? Second. Wayne? Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. So that's pretty neat, and uh, thank you, Mr. Brewer. I'm sure you have a part of that. Anyway, but uh, we're, 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 we're oh, Chris is where are they going to display at the high school? Do you know? We're, we're still working through that. Um, once they arrive, we'll let you know for sure. We'll send some photographs and uh, okay. get it out there and read the letter and then we uh, that's uh, hive hive material. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Kevin, for all the love work and making that happen. Thank okay. you. Uh, I think E. Excuse me. That would be F. Resolve the Board of Education approve the new course proposals for Baker High School Social Studies, ELA, and CTE technology departments pursuant to the attached. Andrew? Second. Wayne? Uh, questions or discussions on these? I think we're ready to vote. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. So I do think this is this is this is great, and I don't know, uh, Renee, is this in your jurisdiction? So it's nice to see uh, us you know, doing some rather cutting edge curriculum. Thank you. Okay, then uh, G. This is uh, a simple approval of the tax information we have, as I understand it. Is that correct, Kimberly? Okay, from South Board of Education, accept the affidavit of collector and unpaid property tax report as presented. So, Andrew, Luke, any questions on that? Okay, then uh, move to vote. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next uh, is the, the board round table. And the first item is the musical production. So uh, we'd ask for some additional information, and I <coughs> have some, so thank you. So first, uh, I know the board, we provided uh, information to you in the uh, November 9th, and then the most recent uh, Friday communication or weekly letter uh, with information about the ticket sales. I know um, some of the members uh, in the audience uh, identified uh, the, the sale numbers. Uh, one thing that I think is important to point out uh, moving forward, uh, when you look at the overall number of tickets that were sold uh, over the last couple of years, um, I think tells a slightly different story, um, one that you know, we're, we're proud of. Um, back in the 2021 year when we had the show Moana Jr., uh, the number of tickets sold at that point in time, uh, overall, there were 1,094 tickets sold over the course of three shows. In 2022, for the production of the Disney's Lion King Jr., there were a total of 1,632 uh, redeemed tickets. And then this year, uh, with the the show Finding Nemo, there were 1,626 uh, tickets. So uh, in, in, in total, pretty comparable to uh, The Lion King, six less tickets redeemed uh, this year. One of the things when we asked for additional information from the, the fine art staff uh, that we learned over the course of this um, review was that there were also um, we had 697 tickets that were sold, uh, and that's when we were communicating that there were no seats left available. Uh, and that auditorium seats close to, to over eight, 800 uh, seats. So we started asking additional questions. Why were we not, why were we communicating that the tickets were sold out and there were still seats available? And, uh, come to find out that we had learned that there was some restrictions that were put on those front seats that were 
uh, identified by uh, members of the audience. And so that is something that's being addressed, obviously, moving forward for the production of our spring musical. Those will be available. One of the things that we also um, learned was that families, and I was a prime example of this when I went to you know, reserve my tickets, um, I did not have the ability to actually select the seats um, like I had had in, in the previous shows. And so we were allowed to identify a uh, region of the auditorium or the theater. And so that will be corrected for the, uh, the spring musical. So in all, when you look at the number of tickets that were redeemed in comparison to previous years were consistent. So the, the number of students, empty seats, is consistent to the, the previous shows. Um, we're hopeful that moving forward, um, as we open up more seats in the auditorium, I know there were a few issues that uh, members of our community, community mentioned uh, regarding the, the sound, sound with some of the portable mics. We are looking at additional um, headsets for the students, my understanding from having our folks talk to the, the musical directors and the staff is that they, there weren't a, enough of the portable headsets. And so one of the things when you're changing those headsets back and forth in between sets or um, it, the wear and tear on, on those. So we're looking at some additional purchases so that students have their own set while they're there if they're uh, one of the, the leads or just have a, a more uh, singular uh, vocal part as opposed to the ensemble. Um, I think it's also interesting um, that you know when we pulled additional information, we found that uh, there were 283 tickets that were reserved by either family members of cast that didn't redeem their tickets or staff members of our um, school district. And so we're certainly asking more questions. Um, you know, when you look at our district mission and vision and our core actions and, and beliefs, um, we're announcing this Friday in our school communication uh, to our families that we are now qualifying for free meals for all students, uh, given the changes in the uh, uh, food service requirements from the federal government. So we do have a, certainly have a, a changing uh, population and need is, is greater, um, and we're being consistent to what we have done with our athletics, our marching band, uh, our instrument purchases at the, the younger level. So um, I certainly you know, continue to stand by what we approved last year as a district moving forward in the budget development process where we identified we were not going to charge for uh, student events, um, but certainly would be happy to answer any additional questions that the board may have. Um, Kim can talk a little bit more about the specifics with the tap and how that falls under the student um, the student requirements for student fundraising and what's considered um, appropriate uh, within the stipulations of extra class activity accounts if there are specific questions the board has but I think I tried to give you as much as I could in the Friday letter but I would open it up for any further comments or questions Right okay. Nancy. Um, I, I understand what the community is speaking to and know what we share just out now. Um, is there a way that um, next year this can be reviewed? Um, it sounds like at the last, I don't want to say last minute, but perhaps not all parties were on board or understanding. I, I don't know, but could it be um, reviewed? Um, after the spring um, production, um, because to a lot of um, in the points that community members and students shared out tonight, it is about the students and to look out in an audience that um, is not full. Um, we really need to do a better job in communicating that. So I'm hoping that maybe it'll be up for review. Yeah, I, spring. I don't, um, I agree with you. I mean, after every situation we reassess and, and review and that's why we ask those more detailed <coughs> questions of the staff to get answers to why there were uh, some seats available. 
I will say uh, as well that this process, I mean, it has been a two-year process that we have been working with the uh, fine and performing arts staff, uh, both from marching band right straight through um, to the musical staff. We started this process about two years ago as a part of our instructional and budget presentations uh, with union leadership and our teachers and committees um, back two years ago. Uh, and you know, we've had conversations in December of last year where the final decision was made that we were moving in this direction. And part of that too is that we were able to get additional aid from proceeds through Arts and Ed, which allows us basically set, we get a return of 75 cents, approximately 75 cents on every dollar for uh, funding that goes toward um, these types of productions. So we were already spending a lot on, or, or some funding on the rights so that we could get the, the reimbursement uh, for our students. So I mean, again, that's just one more piece of information that helps justify where we are and why we went with the decision last school year in the spring when we were working through the budget and development process. So, so other questions. The, the, from my understanding, were these productions ever self-sufficient or did the school always put money into productions? There are certain positions that the school district was always putting money in for. Um, and then in addition to that, there is specific guidance in regards to what extra class programs are supposed to be doing and how they're supposed to be ran. So we go through and do a training every fall with all of the extra class advisors. And when you start looking at what that really means, it's supposed to be a student functioning club where you have certain advisors. Actions are being taken, the students are making the decisions, the students are counting the money, the students are really the ones that own the club and all of the actions that are happening. So we've been working very closely with all the advisors to make sure that the students are literally the ones that are counting the money, that are filling out the forms and the paperwork and working directly with the club advisor who's overseeing them, not doing the work for them. Um, so this is one of those things that every school district continues to strive to get better at. It's a unique situation because the extra class accounts are technically not district funds. However, they are subject to be audited by the comptroller's office and when they come in to audit them and or when our external auditors are auditing them, we're the ones that get the results, the board's accepting the results, and we're the ones that are responsible for doing the corrective action. Understand that. So, so, and from what I understand, is, is more funds were put into the budget for this this year than last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, yeah. So when you look overall, um, and I think the directors would attest to this as well, um, the funding that was allocated for this show was greater than uh, what was provided in, in previous uh, shows, and certainly there is some funding remaining in the, the VTAP EC accounts, which can be used as the students uh, choose, uh, whether they're purchasing some of the things that were mentioned, <coughs> t-shirts and all of those items. Yeah. In, in terms of funds, there's like over, the number I saw was over $22,000 in the VTAP account. Is that correct? Uh, so, so there's enough for yes. chairs and stuff like that, yes, and whatever. Yes, they definitely are still funding, and we have met with the club advisors to kind of talk through the processes, and uh, fundraising is still allowed. So we're not saying that they can't fundraise. There is kind of two different topics. It's just not fundraising for ticket sales is, is uh, the major change. And the district has been working um, extensively with the advisors because it is a shift. Everything has to go through the business office now. It all goes through general fund. So we have to make sure that we're following all the purchasing guidelines that we have in place for the school district and all of our So to the point that they, if they need to purchase something through the business office, it does take a lot of extra steps. You gotta get a PO, you gotta have a, an approval, I guess, right? We, we um, always follow our purchasing processes, but we also do have district credit cards. So, you know, there can be a PO put in ahead of time for purchases and then they stop and get a credit card and go shop and then bring us back to my seat. But if you can't get the credit card, then you can't get the show. Oh, the show is so, so, so is there any other questions or information? Because 
I'm sure this is going to be an ongoing discussion. So I would urge people in the audience, this is not a, a public discussion, but I would urge you to send emails to communicate with us additional questions so that we can understand. I don't know that we can make a change quickly, but we want to see that the right best process for students are followed going forward. Right? So, okay. Any other, Don? Yeah. Um, uh, two things on my mind. Um, one is, I, I don't, I don't know anything about the exact budgeting, um, and I'm wondering what the district input from a financial perspective, what the district input is compared to what the exact funding has been under under sort of their self funding uh, model, and what, what, what's the, is there a net there? Is there a difference? So just in general, when we went, Kim might be able to talk a little bit more specifically, but when we, in general, when we're going through the budget development process, part of the conversation, again, which began um, in, when the decision was made last year in, in December, we asked the directors how much they were anticipating needing to spend based on their experience for future shows so that that could be built into the budget, uh, which it was. And then, Again, we're getting that aid back every year after. Um, so that those, those they've gotten what they needed, um, that exact dollar amount, I'd have to, I don't know if Kim, you know it off the top of your head, we can provide that for the board. Um, but my understanding is, you know, again, they haven't lost anything um, as far as funding. They've actually been cut it. <laughs> yeah, the only other thing about that is I want to echo something that Victor just said there. I, I do want to hear an awful lot more about this because the budgets are fluid. Um, you know, the way the way that money flows is is sometimes mysterious, um, and I'd like to I'd like to peel some of the layers back on this a little bit. Um, because I, I have a a viscerally positive reaction to the argument that took something that was being privately funded and we made it public. Now, I don't know that that's an easy thing to say out loud, you know, it's private, not public, and it's just taxpayer, and I am all about protecting taxpayers. Uh, you know, my record and, and in other places, and you'll see that very, very clearly. Uh, so this is this is of interest to me. Uh, and, and I would, I'd, I'd like to get, I'd like to see those emails and phone calls and whatever else are out there. Sam. I just have a quick question about the um, budget balances of the funds. Is there a limit? I know they're audited, but is there a limit that each fund can have, or does they, do they just carry it over from year to year? They carry it over from year to year, so they're fundraising periodically, and then those funds just shift from, as of June 30th to July 1st. So if you see on the grid, it kind of goes the same amount from the June 30th to the beginning balance on July 1st. And that's just the net, if that's not shot in time. We do provide quarterly um, reports to the Board of Education in regards to all of our extra class accounts. And it really kind of ebbs and flows. I mean, we may have a club that has $10 in their account, or we may have a club that has hundreds of dollars. And if you think about the purpose of the clubs and being student driven, it's based on what the students decide they want to do. So they may fundraise for two or three years for some large trip that they want to do or some large function that they want to do. So every, they have the ability to do all of that as long as they're following the process of Um, that are doing this um, same thing 
um, the other self-funding um, programs by students that are being um, now funded by the arts and ed's uh, funding. Yeah, actually, that's one of the, the things that kind of spearheaded this is arts and ed is, um, you know, a, a service through BOCES that many districts use. And when we actually started looking into this, we learned about other neighboring districts that actually built their program from being funded even less than ours previously was to funding, you know, in six-digit numbers by creating that constant revenue stream. So, you know, some of our people last year were more active and involved in making the switch quickly in the spring. So what we did was we increased their budget line because we knew we were going to have the revenue coming back in from the grocery data on the other side to support that. So as we are tracking this, as they're spending more, we're, we're able to make those shifts because we have the revenue coming back in to support it. To, you know, Dr. DeBarber's point, for every dollar spent by doing it this way, it's really 25 cents for the local taxpayer versus a full dollar, or a full dollar of fundraising, which is really probably coming from our tax base and or our community as well. Um, but we can definitely provide you know, additional information about that. But yes, this is a model that many school districts use to grow their programs. I'm sorry, I just have one last question. So when the, the funds are given back at the 75% rate the following year, are those funds equally distributed amongst the programs from the year prior, or how does that work for budgeting purposes for different uh, programs? Um, and I'm only asking because I want to make sure that um, if, if that program is in need of a certain dollar amount, that they will be able to um, have access to that dollar. And so it's a revenue that comes into the district in just the general fund through um, BOCES aid. But you'll see in the budgets that are, like for example, the budget that's going to be proposed uh, as we move forward through this process, uh, this year you'll see the um, funding that supports the additional change in the increase. So um, that changes from year to year, but it's in the instructional budget presentation that you'll see the adjustment. So it doesn't go back specifically into their account, but we're at a point right now where we're not reducing any portion of one of the budgets uh, for materials and supplies, contractual salaries, that if anything we've actually added. Um, you know, this year alone we've added uh, drama production uh, in our district, uh, thankfully with the board support. So that's one other way that we're allowed, we're able to utilize some of this funding stream that's coming back to the district to put back in for student programming to expand the fine performing arts program. And that hasn't been in place for very long. <coughs> I just have one uh, last question. So the, um, the uh, young high school student that spoke said, talked a little bit about the experience the students have with managing money and that kind of thing. So am I understanding correctly that they'll still have an account? Uh, it'll be, they'll be fundraising, they'll still have an account, and we'll still be able to learn those valuable lessons with that account. It's how they choose to utilize that funding. The students can make that choice if they want to use their funding from fundraising to get extra things that they want for the performances. They have the ability to do that. But the way that it's been budgeted this year, the core, cost of running a production and the directors provided us that information we built that into our um, budget for the 23-24 school year. I have one more question if I'm not in order for people who haven't spoken yet. Um, is there, so I, I, I don't know all the matching stating for POSI's aid or, or you know, all the matching all that, but I said sometimes in a in a public budget, money moves mysteriously and somehow you know, it either appears or doesn't. Um, I'm wondering if there's, if, if it's possible for, for uh, and, and I'm not proposing anything, I'm just sort of spitting off, just thinking out loud. Is, is it possible for us to create a mechanism where there is a line of budget that's funded for, for, for this program that can be, can be displaced by monies that are raised through ticket sales. Yes. In other words, we, we budget easy numbers. We, we budget ten thousand dollars, and ticket sales for a show are raised five thousand um, dollars. 
can can that the, the, the monies that are privately raised be used to to displace the money in the budget line? I don't know if I'm understanding. I'm looking at Kim. I don't know if I understand the question correctly. I know we can't double dip, basically, is the way I'm interpreting it. That, you know, once we've allocated, you know, we can't, can't replace, but I'm going to look at Kim for some assistance for that. So I don't think it's, it, none of our budgeting processes are as really simple as that just sounded. Understood. Let <laughs> <Yes. laughs> um, okay. me start, that's 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 start that's there. Just spitball. Because yeah. I don't know if possible. However, you know, I will follow it up with, you know, I think we pride ourselves in this district to figure out a way to make anything happen that we are charged to do, in addition to this switch that we just made right now. Um, we've made a number of changes, always doing what's best for students and what's right for students. It's not, um, it's, typically it's not as clear as a one for one, but we can always accept donations, but it's in the best interest of our students and our communities. I can give you an example. You know, if it's, um, you know, park week or reading and the PTA is trying to make a purchase and we try to help them extend their dollars, if they give us a donation for the amount of money we're spending and we can get a better deal on something, we can then purchase it out of our bu budget, which is, I think, is about as similar to what you were explaining as I can give you an example for. So there's, there's always ways to try to do what's in the best interest for everybody and stretch dollars as far as we possibly can, which is why we're you know, in, in the position that we are as a district right now. Thank you, that's a good start for Okay, so any other comments? Hi. Uh, just to be from one student, um, as someone who wants to represent all students from everything, it is like a, a discussion that will come up again to see in another meeting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, if, if it like, if just the board would like it as well, I could reach out to possibly the, like the students who are partic participating in the play to get their perspective as well. Because it's, everyone's working together to make these productions happen. So to, to understand the students' point of view and how they may see this on a broader site so we can understand like how, how students are feeling about this. Um, I have no problem reaching out to them and trying to set up something where I can get information on how all the students are feeling and report back to you guys because it was important to hear from one student but it's also important to hear from all of them and not all students, it's very brave to come up here and speak and it takes no, not it, it is it's very it's great you know sometimes it can be scary so not all students will want to come up and speak like that so to make it easier for all students to have their voices heard and their opinions on this topic i can reach out as a student board members to get a broader perspective thank you and, and also be interested in if the experience with the eca funds what kind of experience they have in monitoring and and spending those funds too. You know, yeah, is that and a tricky I can, part? And I oh, that's sure great. Bring up at the next meeting when it is discussed again. Um, and you know, with you know, with time, I, I of have to reach out, find time. That may take time as well, but it's important that it happens, and it's something that I will also push for, so we can understand what the students are feeling, and the students who may not be able to make the board meetings or be able to. Okay, so the other item on here is Robert's Rules of Court. And uh, I think we, we might have had some confusion because our policy, initial policy, did not, that we adopted, uh, didn't cover Robert's Rules. It should have covered Robert's Rules, but we always expected, I think, to run by Robert's Rules. So, any other thoughts on that? That's an expectation of the board, I believe. If you have some knowledge, and we will try to proceed under Robert's rules. So just to be clear, in reference to Robert Rules of Order, how this meeting is functioning is is directly because of Robert's rule. 
I think that the issue that has often come up in our conversation is how we engage in a dialogue about various topics. And I think more recently we have witnessed, um, as has been noticed by community members, that some dialogue, some discussion is not welcomed. So I, I think as we move forward, and to Shelley's point and your statement, I think if you're going to apply Robert's rule, and if you look at some of the additions, the size of our board doesn't necessarily warrant some of the parliamentary procedures that typically you see in larger assemblies, as you have experienced in your role at the state government. I think grounding ourselves in the future and for future board members to ground themselves on what it means to you know, be able to speak um, and to be able to do that unconditionally and uninterrupted, um, as was demonstrated quite nicely here um, in this discussion regarding the BPAP. So I, I think it's just a matter of just practice. I think if you start getting into these things of motions and seconding motions, then we're going to sort of, in my opinion, violate the purpose of Robert Rules was put into place to encourage democratic dialogue um, amongst us. So just put that in in the space. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Okay. Yes, so uh, we'll move on then. I think that pretty much concludes our, our business portion. So uh, resolve the Board of Education to enter into executive session to discuss the employment history of a particular person. So moved. Don? Second. Tanya? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Uh, we'll take a five minute recess. Thank you, everyone.